Hey, this your girl Speedy with DJ CeeLo. About to wreck it real quick. Let them know, you know. What you want me to let them know? What you want me to tell them? You want wait, me to tell wait. them DJ CeeLo, heavy hitters all day. Anything else is just noise. Understand that. We based out in New York City. That's what it is. Yes. Let's talk about these microwave DJs that you was talking Ooh, about earlier. Oh, microwave DJ. We call them <laughs> microwave DJs because you buy a computer, you add your friend's playlist, and you get it popping. Um, no disrespect to nobody who's trying to become a DJ. Um, but a lot of a lot of DJs basically what they're doing nowadays is they're going to the clubs and they're basically copying what another DJ is doing. Right. Or they hear a certain flow of a DJ and they automatically feel like, hey, you know, I can do this, and they go ahead and they go mimic it at another place, and then sometimes make it work for themselves. And that's why we call them the microwave DJ, because you instantly become a DJ after <laughs> adding the song, the song list to your computer. You know. I agree. So for your, you know, your background, your experience, how did you become or get interested in being the one to be a DJ? Well, I was kind of like forced, but not really forced. I mean, I always had the love for music, but not, it wasn't a passion. Um, I used to wake up in the morning, go to school, throw my headphones on, because it was more convenient for me to, you know, to listen to something mm -hmm. as I walked all the way from Manhattan I didn't walk from Manhattan, but I took the train from Manhattan to the Bronx. I started listening to the headphones, and you know, that's how I caught on. You know, listen to Biggie, listen to Nas, listen to the Lost Boys, you know. And I used to walk around, you know. But I wasn't really passionate about music until I went into college. And in college, um, with me and a group of guys, we started doing some parties, and we basically, like, wanted to cut the, the, the DJ off, not because we wanted he, we thought he was white, but more like we wanted to save more money. You know, in college, you struggling, you gotta, you gotta get the bill paid. And um, what happened was, so one of my boys, he had a set of turntables. He's like, yo, I can, I, I can DJ the party. So I was like, yeah, yeah, we could put it in my room. <laughs> we could take the setup, we put it in my room, and you know, and um, we'll work it out. And then you know, you'll do the parties, I'll host it, and that's how we're gonna do it. And um, but eventually, what happened was, I ended up staying at home with the turntables, went at it for like six months straight and caught on to it quick and started doing my first parties in college for like about six months. Then I moved down here, um, hooked up with um, my boy Tech, who's taught me the like the essentials of DJing, how to cut records, how to mix records. And then little by little, um, went on and like I saw people like Enough, Kick Capri, Funk Flex, and um, saw what it is to rock parties, you know? Right. And that's how basically, uh, using all that you know, and what I've learned and put a little bit of spice of my own, it right. became the DJ that I am today. I always got to add your own flavor. It became always. a monster. Always. Six months? Six months, and, and I started, no, well, not, well, not really, oh, okay. About a year later after I started DJing, that was in 2000. About a year later in 2001, I hooked up with my man Tech Nice and also a company called Faith Entertainment. And they, um, they actually, you know, involved me at a 15 minute set. Uh -huh. of, of music in a club that was predominantly Latin, nothing but Latin music all night. But they wanted like hip hop for 15 minutes. Okay. And they weren't paying. Mm -hmm. And my boy Tech was like, I'm not DJing. They're not paying, I'm not DJing. I said, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll rock out. Cool. Uh, yeah. And um, I was like, you know, so I started taking my records over there. You know, it went from, in a year, it went from 15 minutes to half an hour sets. Then in, after two years of doing the party, it went from, Half an hour sets to um, two half hour sets. It was like an hour of, of DJing, which is not bad. Not at all. And I went from getting paid nothing to like, I went up to like maybe like $200. Maybe, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's a jump. From yeah, nothing to something. From nothing to something. And that's what, that's what mattered to me the most, that people really appreciated what I was doing and, and actually, you know, valued what I was doing. So it meant something to me.